Welcome to our Wednesday healing service. The service begins with the Dr. Andre Lash playing, It Is Well With My Soul. Grace and peace be with you, and from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson is from 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciles us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmster appointed for today is from Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I've applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. So ends this altar. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The sheep keeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought, them, brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. 
They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The new geographic center of Christianity has shifted. Now that we are a stay-at-home church, our center has changed. It's no longer Vatican Center City. It's no longer Canterbury, and it's no longer even a mega church like Joel Olstein's. Right now, the church is in millions of homes across the country and around the world. Every one of our homes has become the church. Vatican Square was empty on Easter morning, and the Pope was celebrating the Eucharist in his own private chapel and that little Eucharist was spread across the world. Now on Sundays, hundreds of bishops are preaching before camera, but maybe even alone in their own little chapels. Remember that old question, does anyone hear a tree if a tree falls in the woods? Well, I'm gonna put that question a whole new way. If a priest preaches in the woods, does anyone hear him? Well, email me if you're hearing this. During these times of empty, empty stores and empty streets, I really want you to know what I believe. I believe that the church and the faith is fine. Christianity always survives. It was Ignatius who said that persecution is the lifeblood of the church. The church grows whenever there is turmoil. They discovered that after the 40s, the church in China just had exploded. That's what happens to the church. We prospered during hard times. Christianity is the fastest growing religion in the world. You might not know that. And I can't help but wonder if this pandemic has not caused the seed of Christ to scatter and plant further. Christianity spreads like a seed into the world. Who knows, maybe it has grown in Italy. Maybe it's expanding right now in Spain. Could it be just blooming right now in the United States? Our service today on Wednesday has more attendees, virtual attendees, than it did when it was live in our church before the pandemic. Now, I'm saying Christianity, unquote, quote, unquote, institutional Christianity, you see, really isn't true Christianity. And maybe I think we're discovering that. There are at least 34,000 denominations in the world. Some people say there might be even 122,000 denominations in the world. You could even say there's 122,000 tribes, if you want to put it that way. Jesus said, I, have est I established one flock. But we've broken that one flock into thousands of different flocks or tribes. Now, there's a couple dangers by this fracturing of the flock beyond Jesus asking us to remain in one flock. What happens is anything can be Christianity, which means to me, eventually, nothing will be Christianity. Someone uh, once said, you know, you guys might as well be like those snake handlers down the street, which bothers me because I hate snakes. So what are you gonna do about that? 
someone once said to me, well, you Episcopalians are as bad as the Catholics. Well, you know, you just throw that at someone and you think, well, that leads to about an hour of discussion and I just didn't really have the time. Besides, what's wrong with the Catholics? Someone once said, there's a hazard that every baby chicken faces. If one chick in a flock looks or behaves as if it is somehow different than the rest of the baby chicks, its days are numbered. Eventually, someone will peck at it, pulling out some feathers, maybe causing a red sore spot to emerge, making it look even more different. Now all the other flock members will start pecking at the offending chick. Pecking, plucking, and persecution will continue until that chick is killed. Individuality is not tolerated in a flock of chickens. And unfortunately, the Church of Jesus Christ can exhibit that same troubling attitude. Have you seen that? There is a, a Pentecostalism that says, unless you cannot speak in tongues, you really aren't saved. You can't truly be a disciple. There's a new Wesleyanism that says that unless you follow John Wesley exactly in an everyday life, you can't really or shouldn't call yourself a Methodist. And we Episcopalians do that too, if you think about it. We say, you know, if you, if you really don't follow the right prayer book, if you're not really using the 1982 hymnal, if you're, you know, you're not doing this or that, you're not following the rubrics exactly, well, then we're going to raise our eyebrows. But we have to accept the fact that the differences are what make Christianity so wonderful. It's the differences that give us life. Christianity is really more a quilt than a one-colored blanket. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, may it teach us that. You know, when we order picnic, uh, order pizza, I'm a pepperoni guy. But Tish and Colleen, they are olive people. But you know what? Vive la différence. So we order two pizzas which means I have leftovers for the rest of the week. And that's, that's great. <laughs> when Jesus described himself as the good shepherd, he promised to care for the flock completely, even to the point of laying down his life for his sheep. Jesus's sheep were not identified by color or size or attitude or ability or even form of worship. Or, thank God, where you worship. Even whether you are worshiping in Jerusalem or the temple, as he told the woman at the well, or in your living room using your, I'm shaking it now, your Apple laptop or your Windows laptop. The point is, Jesus' sheep, those that belong to the Good Shepherd, were those who Jesus knew and those who knew Jesus. It's a good thing that there are real differences between the people who follow Christ in South America, in South Carolina, or South Italy. It's a good thing that we have both a Protestant view of the faith and a Catholic point of view of the faith. It's a good thing that we have an older person's way of worship and a younger person's way of worship I'm glad the younger people have a way of worship because I don't really want to have to be there when they're playing their drums. But in any case, the truly Christian flock celebrates its differences, vive la différence. We'll celebrate our differences while recognizing we are one flock in Christ called to live in perfect harmony. Maybe you remember um, that really that really wonderful commercial of 1971. It was a Coke. Coca-Cola commercial, it went like this. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Well, that word harmony is a word from Greek, which actually means uh, having a joint fused together, so it is melted together. The word religion is also a word that means living in harmony. So two different words, and yet in a way they mean the same thing. 
So think about that. We are now apart in our individual homes, but nonetheless, when we practice our religion, we are in harmony. And when we live in harmony, we are joined together in one flock, one flock led by one shepherd. So may we put aside our differences and celebrate the church, and then can we enjoy our differences and enrich the church? A unity of many voices following the voice of the one who knows and follows the Father in perfect harmony, vive la différence. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pete, please join with me in reciting the tenets of our faith as found in the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Saying together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Litany of Healing. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Praying for all who are in trouble, sickness, or need. We pray for all the victims and loved ones suffering from the coronavirus. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies a temple of your presence. We praise you and we thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. 
With you, O Lord, is a well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.